Hello everyone, my name is Allie and this video is going to be me taking you through the Augencore rookie deck. If you're watching this, there's a good chance you're in the parallel beta and if you happen to be new to TCGs or just new to parallel and want a visual guide, this video will be useful to you. So let's get started. All right, so let's take you through a game. So the Augencore parallel is the parallel that specializes in upgrades. So the goal is to stick minions in the early game and then apply uh, or attach upgrades to those units and essentially upgrades are just pieces of equipment that do special things and oftentimes they like chain into very powerful effects so that's the general strategy uh, that you want to be going for with Augencore. all right so in the mulligan here you definitely want to have minions that you can stick uh, so i like keeping this two drop it's really strong it gains plus one plus one every time you attach an upgrade to it uh, but I think I'm going to mulligan everything else because sometimes, like with a deck like this, you really want one drop so you can sort of get the chain going early. Uh, we didn't get a one drop, that's okay. Um, and we are going first here, so remember you have to bank your cards in order to get energy to be able to cast things in parallel. Uh, I don't find recon super useful in this mode, so we can just get rid of it and pass. The Paragon for... Uh, uh, the Augencore rookie deck is the Juggernaut Workshop, which I know I'm kind of blocking it over here. But essentially he comes into play with four counters, and those counters were dwindled down at the end of your turn. And once it gets to zero counters, you'll have the option to summon one of these three Juggernauts. And you're able to choose any one of them um, continually as the counters keep uh, going down. So they didn't, let's see, they didn't play anything. Um, this is just an effect. Target upgraded friendly unit attacks an enemy and it gains evasive. I don't really think we need that. Um, so we can just bank that for an energy point and just put the security officer down. I'm not really expecting it to live, I'm being honest, because PS8 launcher is a little one cost, deal two damage. Uh, and that is quite a popular thing. Uh, so it'll probably die to that, but we'll see. Oh my gosh, it lived. Okay, now the dream is to draw an upgrade. Oh, nice, we did it. Okay, um... Fantastic. So option here, we could just bank something and play our three drop, which isn't too bad. But I think I want to take the opportunity to have uh, the security officer grow and also draw a card. So uh, let's start out with putting this upgrade um, on the unit. And you can see it got plus one, plus one. And when we attack, it'll draw a card. Uh, interesting. Okay, we got the cutting edge. I kind of like this guy because he has the salvage ability. So salvage is the keyword that's special to Augencore. When this unit is wasted, move up to one of its upgrades to other units. So if it said salvage two, you'd be able to move two upgrades to other units. So when this thing dies, you can move the upgrade to another one. I think what we're going to do is bank the six here. because it's kind of expensive right now. I might want to play this next turn as an option. And so I'll just put that down another one and then pass turn. Uh, you always want to be banking, especially in the early turns, because uh, and at the end of your turn, you draw a card if you banked. In the late game, you could make the case that, you know, if you didn't really want to give up any of your cards, you could uh, not bank, but that's kind of for later. But yeah, you know, the early, the, the strategy of the early game of this deck is just sticking minions and, like, putting upgrades on them, trying to not lose board control. Okay, so you can see, uh, ah, the Juggernaut Workshop has one counter left here. Uh, in the, the right, right there. Um, so at the end of this turn, we are going to be able to summon one of those three units. Okay, what do we want to do here? I don't mind the idea of dispersing my upgrades on both of them, or we could just go heavy on one. I think we probably don't need this card, so I'm just going to bank that. And I kind of like the idea of just putting this novice apprentice down and probably putting armed on this one. Again, just to sort of like disperse the threats. We're gonna need a decision here. Could take that out. We get it uh, drawn. We can go fi face. Forget the uh, four damage in. We definitely banked. Okay, end turn. And now we're gonna have the option to choose. I think I'm fine with just taking this 2-5 and uh, shooting this thing for 3 here. Uh, 
Both of these also have shielded too, which is really strong. So basically that means that the first effect or like spell card that um, targets this minion will not resolve. So shielded is very annoying <laughs> uh, for your opponent if you've got uh, minions like this. I decided to sort of disperse the upgrades because exactly kill spells like that. Um, if I go all in on one, then maybe I'd be a little sad. But you can see the, uh, they tried to cast Erasure on my 4-2, but it didn't resolve because of the shielded. That's really nice. Uh, let's see, we've got access to five energy this turn. I could play an upgrade on this to be able to draw a card, which I honestly don't hate just because I don't have any other upgrades in my hand. But I also want these to be growing for damage. So, you know what? Actually, we can attack with this first and draw a card and see what we get. Because again, this has the upgrade, the ocular implant, which draws a card. I don't find that this to be that useful, so we can just use that as energy, fodder, and... You know, I'm gonna put the kill switch on the Innovative Apprentice so I can get another draw. Mercenary Gunsinger, okay. And we'll just attack and pass, I suppose. We're gonna need a decision here. Now, I will say that it does get shielded every time you attach a upgrade to it. So there is a chance here that they have a second erasure and now they're like, oh yay, now I'm excited because there's this isn't shielded. Um, I can take this out. And if that happens, that's honestly okay. I think we'll be fine. Okay, so this card has banished target enemy unit until this leaves the field. So if I uh, kill this, I will get my unit back. You can always, uh, if you forget what units are, or what upgrades are attached to the, you can always uh, right click it. So this one does have cutting edge on it. So this does have armed. So it works kind of like first strike and magic. So I will be able to attack this and my 4-2 will not die. So we might want to do that. Uh, let's see, what do we want to do? Honestly, I'm kind of fine with starting out uh, doing that. There we go. We got our other security officer back. I don't think think we need this at this point at the end of the tune create a 2-2 so we can just bank that and I'm kind of fine with just shooting this and then I can either play this uh, as a 3-3 three, three that deals three to anything and shoot that and go face or I could just take the trade and get my crew boss developed all viable options we're gonna need a decision here We'll just do this. And then I guess get to push three damage here. And we're looking pretty strong. One of my favorite upgrades in this deck is Kill Switch, which I don't think we've seen yet in this game, but it's a three cost upgrade that reads, when the upgraded unit dies, you then can pick any of your opponent's units to kill. So that's like one of your best answers in the game uh, or in this particular deck. So that's a really good one. And then I think my other favorite uh, upgrade is the cutting edge, which is this. Upgraded unit has plus one, plus zero, and armed. So it's just a cheap upgrade that you can attach early and allows you to kind of control the early board because it's got arms so you can take out a unit without yours dying a lot of the time. So that's a really good one. Okay, so this unit here has defender. So I'm gonna have to kill this before making my attacks. Well, actually, I could attack face, but then my opponent could choose to uh, defend if they wanted. Okay, so, oh, oh, we did see kill switch. Great. Um, here's a perfect example. Okay, so this is now killing my 1-1, one, one, and now I can choose this one to kill. Oh, this was a perfect example. Okay, I'm so happy. Uh, so we did play kill switch, which on the 1-1, one, one, which really worked out for us. So they killed my 1-1, one, one, probably didn't realize that I had a kill switch on it, and now I just was able to uh, target the siphoner there. Okay, so this should be lethal, but just for good measure, we'll play the crew boss, which gives plus one, plus one <laughs> to everything, just because, and now we can tack our opponent down and kill them. I would say that generally the Juggernaut Workshop is probably the strongest Paragon in the rookie mode because the sustained value of just summoning one, summoning one of those three units every uh, three turns 
is just so strong. So we will probably do well with Agincourt in the rookie mode. There are some little nuances that maybe I didn't talk about. Like you could hold back the Innovative Apprentice, which is uh, the one cost unit to like guarantee that you you know have an upgrade to cast on her in the same turn so that you definitely get the draw because she draws a card after you attach an upgrade to her. So there's little stuff like that that you can think about. But generally speaking, get on board when you can, attach upgrades to your units and you know, kill your opponent. <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you found it helpful, give it a thumbs up and let me know if you've been enjoying Parallel uh, in the comments and subscribe to the channel as there will be lots of future Parallel content to come. All right, thanks so much for watching this video. Bye.